if you think ghosts and horror movies are the only horrifying things that could give you nightmares, well, you're wrong. After watching this video, we're pretty sure that it won't be easy for you to sleep for the first couple of days. Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. We are here again with some interesting facts. Today's video is about 12 ways to kill people by torture that you've never heard of. Number 12. Judas Cradle Diverse, horrific torture devices were devised in Europe during the Middle Ages for various purposes. Most importantly, these technologies were created and perfected during the 14th century, when the Inquisition was fully operational. The Judas Cradle should not be confused with the similar torture device known as the Horse, which was popular in Prussia at the time. The Judas Cradle was a wooden pyramid-shaped structure in which the victim was placed at the very top, is that her hands and legs would be bound, making it impossible for the weight to be transferred. The feet of the victims were frequently chained together with the objective of heightening the discomfort whenever the feet moved. This involves placing the victim in a waist harness which is attached to the ropes at a certain distance from the ground, which basically makes the victim hanging from the waist and slow lowering the ropes in which he, she, is tied in onto the pyramid-shaped seat with the pointy top which gradually gets inserted into his, her, private parts due to the downward force of the victim's body. This eventually leads to tearing of the muscles around the orifice resulting in the disemboweling of the victim. The victim's legs were sometimes weighted, which intensified the suffering but also resulted in a faster death. Other times, oil was applied to the device, which made the agony worse. Gives you goosebumps even by hearing it, doesn't it? Well, we have something more horrible than that. Number 11. Brazen Bull Game of Thrones lovers, we call out to you to put down the name of the person in our comment section, who was executed in the same manner in the beloved series of GOT. But before that, we would like to brush your memory and give other viewers the idea of what actually we're talking about. The Greeks are not only considered great mythologists and experts of art, literature, and science, but also for their sadistic approaches towards the kinds of punishments, one of them being the brazen bull, which was designed for Phalaris of Sicily for the first time. The brazen bull is a hollow bull made up of bronze which could very well fit a human being in it. The process involves locking the victim inside the bull and lighting a fire at the bottom of the bull's middle part of the body, which would completely burn or roast, whatever you may prefer to call it the victim inside the bull. Greeks' sadism becomes more apparent when they designed this torturing device where the pipes were fitted in such a way that the screams of the victim dying inside would sound like the hollering of an angry bull which gave bewilderment to the bystanders. Number 10. Scaphism The Greeks, infamous for accomplishments in various arenas, have described scaphism as a Persian method of torture as well as execution. It is also known as boating. The process of tormenting the victim starts with stripping them naked and then fastening a pair of boats face to face keeping the head and limbs sticking out of the boat. The accused is forced to drink a mixture of milk and honey to the point that he develops diarrhea along with which more honey is applied to his body to attract insects to the uncovered parts of the body. The victim is then left in a still pond or lake to float or be exposed to the sun. The waste Species of the impuissant accused accumulated in the boat attracts more insects which would also devour and breed within his uncovered or exposed flesh. In other circumstances, the feeding would be repeated every day to prolong the agony and prevent him of dying of dehydration or hunger. When death did come, it was most likely a result of dehydration, malnutrition, and septic shock. Scaphism was a torturous, humiliating, and lengthy method of death. Number 9. The Seesaw of Death you would probably stop going to the park or would not stop having nightmares after we tell you about the seesaw of death. Imagine yourself playing on the hanging bars. Suddenly, you see yourself tied upside down by your feet and your hands are also tied behind you. And weight of your body starts to flow towards your head and makes it difficult for you to scream as you see a saw coming right towards you. Horrifying enough? If not, then listen to this. The act of sawing or cutting a living person in half, either sigillally typically in even or uniform parts, or transversely, was known as death by sawing. Death by sawing was a technique of execution that was said to have been used in several places of the world. This method of torture and execution was invented by the Chinese and was practiced by the Romans. 
The executioners start cutting the body of the victim from the middle of the thighs or legs, then lead to the bone and cartilage. The death of the victim is slow and agonizing as most of the blood has reached the brain leading to minimal blood loss. The witches and the blasphemers during the Middle Ages were usually tortured through this method. Death by saw is a quiet one as the movement of the saw through the pelvic bone of the victim reduces the ability to scream. Number 8. The Rack This torture technique is the most infamous one and has been witnessed many a time in various movies as well. Rack, the name suggests wooden equipment used for torturing the victims, mostly for extracting information out of them. Did it ring any bells for you? Not yet? Then have a look at this picture. Yes, this is what a person on a rack looks like. The wooden setting has a roller at both ends to which the victim's hands are at the top and legs are tied at the bottom. As the torment proceeds, the torturer or the executioner slowly rolls in the wheels increasing the tension on the chains and elongating the victim's arms and legs to their extreme. The joint of the accused is dislocated and eventually separated so much so that the popping noise of the bones and cartilages breaking can be heard. Unlike the other methods, this technique doesn't cause immediate wounds, rather it gives slow and agonizing pain that keeps getting worse as the cartilage, bones, ligaments, and joints of the arms and legs are stretched beyond the limits. It quickly breaks the person down as their shoulders and hips separate and their limbs are ruined. If a person is lucky enough to survive the rack, he would never be able to walk again. It was the most feared method of torture during the Middle Ages, which was again persuaded by Russia in the 18th century. Number 7. Impalement Impalement is attributed to Roman authorities, but this has been used as a manner of punishment since the Mesopotamia, especially for the most despised criminals. It may appear simple to you, but the execution is harsh and barbarous in and of itself. The penetrating of a human by an item such as a stake, pole, spear, or hook sometimes but a whole or partial perforation of the torso is known as impalement as a method of torture and execution. It was primarily utilized in reaction to crimes against the state, and it was seen as a particularly cruel kind of capital punishment in a variety of civilizations, as well as being documented in a myth and art. During times of war, impalement was frequently employed to put down rebellions, punish traitors or collaborators, and punish breaches of military discipline disrespect for the state's responsibilities for secure highways and trade routes by committing highway robbery or grave robbery, infringing official rules or monopolies, or subverting trade norms were all offenses where impalement was occasionally used. Therefore, impalement occurs when a huge stake is inserted into the back of the accused and then forced forward until it emerges out of the convict's mouth or through the head. This type of torture was used to convey a message to anyone invading the land that they would be tortured in the same way. Modern users such as the Ottoman Empire and Dutch rulers of the East Indies adopted this tactic extensively. It was popularized more by Vlad the Impaler, who inspired a novel named Dracula, and then was later practiced during the Armenian Genocide in 1919. Number 6. Poena Kule When it comes to determining the most advanced systems of law, Roman law would be the correct answer. Poena Kule emerged when a Roman judge had an accused of killing his father in front of him he decided to award severe execution of the accused. No other execution method of the Romans is more famous than this one. Firstly, the accused would be severely whipped while his head must be covered with a sack. He is later stitched in a large leather sack. You must be thinking he'd be beaten up by the executioners. Well, the answer is no. When stitched in the leather sack, he is not alone but put together with a combination of living animals, totally unfriendly in nature and capable of causing pain. For example, a snake, a rat, a dog, or a monkey. After which the leather sack containing the accused and the animal is thrown into the water to drown with the aim that the animals will ferociously attack each other in order to save themselves. It was done just to make the death of the accused more painful, rather than simply drowning. Number 5. Breast Ripper and Pair of Anguish Torturers have always referred mutilation as the best form of tormenting the victims or the accused. As trivial as it may sound to some of you, it is one of the most barbaric methods as far as women are concerned. Usually, women who were accused of abortion or adultery were sentenced to such punishments. A metal heaton or frozen is used to rip off the breasts of the women. This device was used in medieval Germany. 
Moving on to the pair of anguish, the name itself suggests the abomination of the tortures. The pair of anguish is a metal device shaped like a pear whose ends would open out once it is inserted in the victim's mouth, other private parts, or any area of an open wound. To make it more hideous and painful, spikes were added to the end of the pears. Number 4. Necklacine This type of torture involves forcing the victim to wear a rubber tire filled with gasoline around his chest and hands, then setting it to fire. The victim dies as a result of severe burns within 30 minutes or so. This torturing method was practiced, mostly, in the South African countries as well as in India by the mob groups in order to punish the offenders or rapists. One of the recent incidents of the same kind was the execution, or necklacing as we would say, was of the journalist Tim Lopez by the Brazilian drug dealers who put his body in gasoline-filled tires and set it on fire. These techniques are utilized to inflict pain and prolong the death of the victim. Number 3. Blood Eagle Vikings have long been associated with vicious, over-the-top brutality, thanks to their speedy longboats and murderous raids. These clans fled their Nordic homelands between the 9th and 11th centuries to make their livelihoods trading and marauding across Europe. The prime example of their brutality would practically be the Blood Eagle, a gruesome practice performed by the warriors upon their enemies. God, they must really hate their enemies. So the Vikings carry out this process by incising the victim's back open and slicing the ribs away from their spine before the lungs are actually pulled out from the wounded area, making it look like an eagle. People in the audience out there who have watched or read about Vikings, you know what this is about. As legendary as it was for the Vikings and their violent supremacy, the archaeologists and the researchers have discarded the existence of the Blood Eagle for many decades as there was no proof or evidence of such practices as the Vikings themselves have never mentioned it, but only in their poetries and stories. But we believe that for the Vikings, such practices were not something out of the box as they were known for their cruelty. Number 2. Rat in the Bucket You must be aware of the defense skills of the rat, and they can do anything to come out of an unpleasant situation. If not, then you should definitely watch this part of the video where we explain how dangerous these tiny creatures can be. The very nature of rats to escape any odd circumstances is generally utilized by the torturers as an advantage to their experiments. How does that work? So a bowl or a container filled with rats is placed open side down on the naked body of the victim, and burning charcoals are put on the top of the bowl, which heats up the container and makes it unbearable for the rat to stay inside. And the only way out? is for it to tear or nibble into the part of the body to which it is exposed to so that it can escape the heat. Once the rat chumbles its way through the victim's body, it renders him dead. Number 1. The Head Crusher It's a contraption that clamps down on the victim's head and smashes it between a metal plate and a spherical metal cap on the victim's head. The victim's skull is progressively crushed as the executioner turns the handle. Bone shards from the skull can enter the brain, producing spontaneous muscle spasms and, of course, brain hemorrhaging. If the person delivering the suffering wishes to torment the prisoner, he could strike the metal cap with an iron rod, causing agonizing pain throughout the victim's body, and eventually killing him by crushing his jaws and gouging his eyes out of their sockets. With this, we've come to the end of the video. We hope that the information was of some use to you. We'll be back with another interesting video of facts. Until then, stay tuned, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel.